All right, good evening. This is Joe Joseph RC. Look at this mess. How many of you have used this? I'm not too used to this. This is one of my first teardowns and rebuilds. I think I've only done one or two. I've done some builds, but as far as completely tearing it down and rebuilding it back up, I think this might be my first or second that I can think of off the top of my head. But you guys are probably used to this aftermath. Whew, boy, did I get messy. I'm going to put all the black, I'll probably finish putting the blaster back screws in there. These are the, all the screws I replaced, the stainless steel screws. About to show you on the slash what all I've got. Like, uh, here's the old uh, transmission box. Um, after I tore it apart, I realized I already had RPM rear A-arms on there. So there was no reason to open these up. Hey, I got spares. Sweetness. I didn't put the lights on yet. I just haven't decided exactly where I want them yet. I'm still playing around, so I'm watching other people's videos. But uh, this is cool. A lot of parts and donations that people gave me in the past have went on to this build, getting this thing to be as nice and new as possible. I redid the body. I realized that some parts I had scratches in the body, like where the uh, where the black is and stuff. So what I did is some of those corners, I went with a mark black magic marker and Sharpie. Just kind of touched it up a little bit. And later on, I'll probably back it with either some shugu or something to make it more permanent. But at least you didn't see straight through and clear, you know. It'll make it nicer and neater. This is just uh, duct tape that I put in some areas after I spray painted it right away to reinforce the body to make it last longer. I'm going to put drywall tape and shugu throughout this body, make it last longer since this is one of the first bodies I personalized. I'm very proud of my job here. I really, really like this body and I want to make it last. All right. All right. I'm going to have to find a way to mount this to where I can show you what's going on. So let me pause this and show you what's going. One moment. All right, here we go back to this. At the end of this, I really wish I had some mousse slick to re-slick uh, everything up. I am going to hit it with some WD-40 silicone, though. To, you know, to kind of give it some of a protective coating on a lot of this. So it's easier to clean next time. And a lot of things were real easy to clean last this time because... Uh, the last time I did go through it, I did hit it with some moose slick, so a lot of stuff came clean real easy. So that was kind of nice. But, uh, da -da -da -da, let's see. Of course, I think I already showed you in the last videos that these were already replaced. But you notice that bulkhead no longer is... With the reflecting of the light, it looks blue. But that's only in this light. It actually looks black to me here. I don't know why that's looking so bluish on here. Maybe my eyes are just that bad. Uh, but I like it. It still looks good here. The new transmission's on here. Just went through it. Cleaned it up. If you notice something else on here, had to go to Squirrel LOD's vid uh, videos. The Squirrel OD, I think that's what it's called. And to learn how to do these MIPs. Everybody else was having different set of MIPs. Mine are thinner. I, I don't know what the difference between the twos are. But I'm really happy that I got that done. Nice and slick. Real nice. Yeah, I got some metal drive shafts. The first metal drive shafts I've ever had, so I'm excited about it. My first MIP drive shafts to boot. Uh, I think she's looking really slick. I'm really happy with what's going on here. Extremely happy about those dog bones. I'll probably never have to replace those as long as I own it. Um, tips. When you're uh, doing your uh, rebuilds and putting everything back together, I took the screw off, pulled this off, Turned everything on, and while it was on, I uh, I centered these to where they're as straight as possible, and then I carefully replaced it back on, screwed it back on. That way, when I turn the RC on, and it sets to center, these would be centered with the uh, servo. In other words, as you're taking it off and on, you may have uh, spun it one way or the other, and when you put it back on, you might not be centered. So when you put it back together, make sure you disconnect the servo horn, turn everything on, then screw it back on. That's a little tip. I did a, a video of me putting everything back together. That video did not come out right. It was all horde. So, yeah, I don't have any video footage from that one. That was really salvageable. The lighting was just really weird and awkward. and The sound was really weird, too. I, I don't, it, was, it was there, but I, I was like the batteries low. You know when things start having that gurgle sound? It's the best way I can describe it as weird. So, I just avoided that one. Not gonna post that one, but uh, this is the aftermath. I'm glad it's done. Very happy with it. Only big mistake I made 
was I forgot to dye the shock shafts. Those are still gray. Oh! But, yeah, at least they work. Uh, only th bad thing about the shocks is the shaft, not the shock, no, I'm sorry, the shock body is what I did right there. The shock shafts on the, on the rear are pitted, right down here. And as I was cleaning things, cleaning some of these uh, parts out, I realized some of the shock oil came out here. So I'm thinking on some of the shocks, those uh, pitted shock shafts are sh scratching whatever's up in here and bringing oil down as they're coming up and down, up and down. But I did clean them out and I think it's okay for now. For the future upgrades, uh, other than replacing the shocks, or at least parts of the shocks that need to be replaced, I may or may not replace. I might just buy the parts needed to, uh, just the little shaft things at least, and that might just fix the problem there. I don't know if I want the lowering kit because I bash. I go back and forth on that notion. I thought about making this my racer. I think the lowering kit and maybe a better set of uh, street tires maybe would be kind of cool for these for out in the street. But uh, or finding somebody who can glue these better. As you see, I don't know if you can see there's not where the rim is really tight to the tire. Then right around here there starts to be a gap between the tire wall and the rim. There's this little gap right there. I didn't glue these very well. I'm, I always stink at gluing tires. I just, I never get it right. And when it's spinning and driving, you can really start to see the hump a little bit. And it does affect the performance of it when you start going fast. So that's kind of a pain. Um, hopefully this will come unglued as time goes on and I'll re-glue them. Or maybe I'll get some acetone and put a little bit of acetone in there and clean that glue off and re-glue it as time goes on. But I love those uh, J-Concept Rolex rims. They just, they're really nice. Especially on the Pro-Line rims. I know that's weird. A Pro-Line tire with a Jeep Concepts rims. But I like the look. I really do. I'm really... I'm in love with it. it looks beautiful together. In my opinion. And I think also having... Uh, not every one of the rivets are, are, are green. It's every other one. And uh, the spokes, it's every third one that's green. So they don't align perfect with each other. But as far as the total rim when it's spinning, I think it looks really nice. It's a really cool look. I like it. Uh, underneath, I did some of the some of the work here. You know, some of the tracks the tracks has been painted out, and server horn be painted out and make it look nice. Make it stand out a little better. Uh, let's see what else we got. I don't know. I can't think of anything else I want to change except for upgrading the shocks. I'm very happy with everything now. It's really uh very very pleased with how I've where things have come together. Oh yeah, that's something else I was thinking about doing. Thinking about ordering another set of the uh, skid plates and a new bumper for it. I'll probably just get a stock one. But when I put the stock one back on, I'm trying to think who it was. I got to go find their video where they had a aluminum chassis. And over that aluminum chassis, what they have done is put some kind of uh, material down. So instead of the chassis getting scratched up, that material got scratched up. And you could take that material off and put new material on as years go on. I thought about doing that with the bumper, at least the bottom part of the bumper and, and this part of the uh, skid plates with the new ones so they last a little longer. This isn't too bad, so this it, 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 I don't have to do it right away. It can last, I could probably go another two or three years the way it is set up right now and be fine. But um, it is rubbing. It is wearing down. So when I do get new ones, I'll, I'll, I will do some kind of coating or something on it to make them last longer. But I, I, yeah, it just looks bad when it's all so nice and clean except for right there scratched up. This is electrical tape. Probably an eyesore to some, but to me it's okay. It's the blue uh, 2075 servo, but I didn't want the blue standing out. So the easiest way for me underneath is I just put electrical tape right over it. I didn't want to dye the servo because I don't know how waterproof it really is. And if I tried one thing before in the water to dye and it didn't work out right for me. So I'm kind of cautious about dyeing things black when it comes to the electronics. So I just covered it in electrical tape up here. And the... Uh, that tape was donated. They've mentioned it before their name, and I forgot who it was. But I rewrapped it again, make it nice and neat. It just has a cleaner look when it's wrapped in tape instead of just that blue sticking out on everything. Uh, this is the Do the Hobby Wing uh, WPSC8 ESC that I have. I love this thing. Works fantastic. I've never had a problem with it. I'm very happy with it. Uh, tack on motor. It's the uh, James review. He was reviewing that tack on motor and he was getting pretty close to uh, 
performance wise as the Vlineon, and for the price that I paid for the two together, I didn't pay $100 for both parts. And I got some great performance out of it. And for the price for being brand new, I think that's a really nice uh, price range for them. So I'm happy with them. I've remained happy with them. I have no complaints. Place these screws, the aluminum screws too. Or that aluminum, but um, stainless steel. It's nice that I know it's all stainless steel throughout, even down to the diffs and everything. Then I'm not going to have to replace those screws again. They're not going to rust out. I don't have to go back and clean those little screw heads out of rust anymore. It's that's really nice not to have to worry about anymore. I, I'm so happy about that. This went all nice and neat. This is the RPM. Uh, oh man, mounts, body mounts. That worked out really great. The uh, it's still the stock shock tower. So is this the front one still stock? Also, I will get the RPM body mounts up here because they're adjustable. So when I go to different bodies, which I do want to get a different body later on down the road, for um, no, not for this one. I'm sorry, for this one, I'm good. For my four wheel drive slash, I eventually want to get the adjustable ones because my four wheel drive slash, I want to get the Silverado body from Proline because that just looks sweet, and I wanted to turn my four wheel drive slash into more of a monster truck. I think that would be fun. Sorry, I'm, I've got the two mixed up in my head for a second there. But um, I don't really plan on replacing this because it's not that scratched up. It's not banged up. For how hard I've driven this car and how much it's been through, these have not broke on me. So I don't have a need for me to have to replace them. If I do, I will. The back one here did have some problems. So I'm glad I got a new one on here. But as I took the old one off, I realized I had a spare of the of the stock one. I was like, oh man, but eh. At least I got a spare one in case that breaks, but I don't think that's going to break. I think that's going to last. It's going to be just fine. My Nerf bars are starting to wear in. They're starting to show signs of wear, but they're still fine, still functioning, so I'm not going to replace those anytime soon. Mm, loving it. Very happy with the work I got done. Very, very, very happy with the outcome. Um, still trying to decide where I want to place these. I know for a lot of people, put them underneath the chassis. So I'm thinking about doing mine differently. And I thought about putting mine on the sidewall here. Or up inside here so they're shining down. And since this is all back to silver, I think it would reflect a lot of that light and it might work out well. Then again, it might not. I don't know. So I'm still getting some ideas. I think underneath the body would be kind of, you know, in the dark. I think that would really reflect it nicely. But I think what I might end up going with is... uh not where the nerf bar would press up against them but putting them inside the door lining just above where the nerf bar is and i could tell where that is where it rubs right here it's rubbing there and it's rubbing there so i know i would probably place them just on the top part of the tape or just right there on the body which i would probably put some shoe goo down and then put them on top of the shoe goo and let the shoe goo hold it down instead of just wait relying on the adhesiveness but yeah really happy with it uh, the next RC I will be going through is going to be the Bandit. I'm going to get that prepped up so I can start getting that to be my first 70 mile an hour vehicle. But before I even work on that one, the first set I've got to do is the, uh, Project Wifey again. I need to clear the table off, get it all cleaned off, and get it set back so she can have the table for a little while. Because I can't just keep it for myself all the time. But I did leave it enough to where at least I can do my video, my update, and then I'll clean it off. And give it back to her for a little while. <laughs> Gotta keep the wife happy. Alright guys, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Give me your ideals, inputs, what you guys think. Uh, I haven't, Like I said, I haven't put these on yet. I only have thoughts and ideals of what I want to do. I still haven't made my mind up. I've watched quite a few videos of other people with what they're doing. So feel free to give me your comments where you think it might work really well at. I don't want to put it where it's going to get bumped or scratched though. And why in the world? I just realized one of the screws are not fully screwed in. I'll have to investigate that in a minute. All right. Well, yeah. Give me your ideas and input on that one. Uh, what would you guys do about the shocks? Those shafts that are pitted? Uh, would you guys leave those in there until they're completely done? Or do you think it's going to cause more problems and it's better to go ahead and replace those sooner? Or the shocks are just... I don't know. What do you guys think? Get your inputs on that one. Or maybe uh, there's a way to sand them down to repurpose them and not even have to replace them. I don't know. I'm, I'm looking. I'm going to learn. I am going to get rid of this. Um, these were fun for a little while, but now that I've learned more, what I'm going to do is do the zip tie effect with the uh, shrink wrap and have into the little pull tabs. I'm going to get rid of this string up front because it looks tacky having that there. 
and then it's such a nice job painting the body up, and that just really tacky, makes it look tacky. So those are going to be gone. I'm not going to do that anymore. But it was cool for a while. Uh, yeah, that's it. All right, guys, have a great day.